Hi everyone, my name is Sean Doherty and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to get started with using scheduling inside of Celery and how to use a library called Django Celery Beat for dynamic scheduling. So the advantage of this is if you have multiple users in your system and you want different Celery tasks to execute at different times for your users, this is the ideal thing to set up within your project. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how the end result of this video will actually look. So we he have here a uh, React application and uh, it is asking us to schedule a task by selecting the day of the week and the time of the day that we want the task to execute. So this dropdown is also multi-select. So if we want the task to uh, execute on multiple days of the week, we can select multiple days of the week if we want. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna select uh, one option so at the time of recording this video, it is Sunday, um, and it is 25 minutes past one. So I'm gonna schedule a task to execute at uh, 26 minutes past. So if I can schedule it in time, click Submit. And then if we jump to our salary logs, so we can see here in our salary logs that the task has just been scheduled. And uh, as soon as it hits 26 minutes past, then the task will actually execute. So now it is 26 minutes past, and we can see here in our salary logs that the scheduler has picked up the task that we set earlier, and that the task has been received by the salary worker, and that the execution is now uh, starting to happen, uh, which is great to see. So that's just a quick overview of what this video will actually cover, and we'll go into more detail later on. So in terms of actually getting started yourself, um, I've created a repository. I'll include a link into the video description below where you can access it. The repository is called Docker Salary. So this uh, repository I've talked about in my two previous videos in greater detail um, and how to get started with using uh, Docker and Salary and other aspects of implementing Salary. So I'd recommend checking out those previous videos too. Uh, to find out more about this project but in this video I'm just going to be focusing specifically on the scheduling aspect. So um, uh, what we have here is a docker salary repository and we have it containing a bunch of docker containers for running this system in a production environment. We have our uh, uh, Django REST API uh, and our salary worker where we'll actually be uh, discussing more today. And then we have a React Native application, which is this application that you can see here. So to get started, I would just recommend downloading this repository and then pulling it up in your local ID and then you can follow along uh, with me as I'm explaining things through. So now that you have the copy of the code base on your own local machine, now we'll be going through the first part of the application, which will be the front end, and then we'll go into the back end afterwards. So uh, as we can see here in a React Native application, we just have a simple card. It's got a multi-select dropdown and a time of the day that we can select the, you know, we want things to occur at. Um, so the way this is actually working is that we have a React uh, component that we call Schedule Salary Task, and uh, it has a button inside of it called Submit. And then once we press the Submit button, it'll grab these two values and then uh, send those two values to our backend endpoint. Uh, that we're calling hitman schedule. So we can see here that the post is occurring here, uh, hitman schedule. And we can see here that, so we'll pass in a few different values as part of this post request. So the target name, Keanu Reeves, uh, schedule time, uh, which will be the time of the day that we want the task to execute. And then the days of the week, which is an array of strings. So if we want the task to repeat multiple times throughout each week, uh, we can uh, enable that. Uh, there's also other types of schedules that you can set up if you want. So if you want uh, a task to execute the same date of every month, for example, um, so it's like banking software, uh, you can set up schedules for that very easily or um, there's so many different ways, like on the 10th hour of every day, you might want a task to execute, um, but, uh, we're just gonna be following this kind of schedule and pattern uh, for this kind of video. Um, so uh, this endpoint hitman schedule, uh, we have it defined here in our URLs. So if we click into it, 
uh, we can see the details of what's actually occurring. So uh, we're, get, we're getting the data that is actually being posted. We're just parsing out the date here and then we're creating a thing called a cron tab schedule. So the cron tab schedule is basically defining the pattern at which we want the task to uh, repeatedly execute. So what I'm saying here is that uh, because I'm sending an array of strings, which are days of the week, I'm basically uh, combining all of these items in the array into one uh, comma separated uh, string. And this will be the days of the week that the uh, schedule will uh, uh, trigger on essentially. And then we also are defining the hour and the minute uh, that we want things to occur as well. So uh, with this schedule, um, after we have created it, and um, it's now persisted inside of our Django Salary Beat um, database, uh, what we're going on to do then is we're going to create a periodic task. So as part of this periodic task, the schedule is included, but it's important to note as part of the periodic task that the name of the task has to be unique. So this name here, if we click into the model definition of a periodic task, the unique equals true flag is being set. So um, if you're scheduling multiple tasks and um, say, uh, say for example, uh, you only want one occurrence of a particular kind of task, you can use this update or create uh, method within Django. So if a name already exists with the schedule name, so if a periodic task already exists that has the same schedule name, it'll just update that existing record. Uh, and then if it doesn't, it will create it. So uh, this update or create uh, resolves that kind of uh, uniqueness conflict that may arise. So it, it's, up to, it's up to you and your um, current uh, project implementation. Uh, but that's just one of the uh, possible ways of um, handling those kind of things uh, that a lot of uh, people would use. As part of the periodic task, we're also saying that here is the reference to the task that we actually want. So it's important to note that whenever you're pulling out the references of your tasks, that it's it's matching up with the same uh, name as the... Uh, if you're using PyCharm, for example, a quick, easy way to get the task reference is if you go into your uh, salary task and you right click and then if you just go copy it'll be come up copy paste special you're just going to copy reference and then that will pull out the reference for you exactly as is um, it says that you have to be it's very easy to make a mistake whenever you're dealing with uh, references and then the arguments is uh, as you can see here in our task so we have the bind property equals true which will be passing in some uh, 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 context to the salary task. So this is why the self flag is included. Um, but the the main art the main argument of this function is called target name. So what we're doing is we're just passing in target name here. But the reason why this is an array here is because you can have multiple arguments. So say we added another argument. Um, I don't know. Say like target age, for example then we can easily add on to our array, you know, age, for example, and that will be included as part of the function call. But it's important that uh, these values are serialized and they're not in memory uh, references to objects because this JSON needs to be stored within your Postgres database. And if it can't be serialized, then this will fail to uh, perform the update or create. So uh, I'll just remove those two arguments there. Uh, and then uh, we're now making reference to our cron tab schedule that we've previously created. So uh, we'll step through an example of the thing executing. So I'll just go ahead, I'll click submit. We can see here that we've got our cron tab schedule. It's come through. And uh, once we step over things, we continue. And there we go. So we can see that our salary task is created and this uh, scheduling is stored within our local Postgres database. So if we want to delete the schedule, we can uh, call the normal delete command within Django. Uh, so this is a quick and easy way of ma managing schedules for your users. And uh, you can define 
so many different types of schedules. So if you want a task to execute the same hour of every day or the same date of every month, uh, there's so many different ways you can chop and change it. But that's just a quick overview of how to get started with scheduling on your local environment. And then in terms of actually running things in production, in a previous video I've discussed these uh, salary beat and salary daemon bash files, I recommend checking out. It's in a video called uh, getting started with Docker and Salary. Um, so the, the important thing to note is whenever you're running things in your local environment, I've included the arguments. Um, it's in the readme file on the main directory. So right here, the important part is the hyphen beat, the hyphen beat flag, and we also have the scheduler flag here included. So we're stating that we're using the Django Salary beat library here. Uh, if, you, if you're missing one of these arguments, the periodic tasks will not execute on your salary worker. So um, you'll see something along the lines of that a, period, a periodic task will be created, but the salary worker never actually picks the periodic task up. Um, so it's usually an indicative that there is some, you know, parameter missing as part of your salary worker setup. But in an actual production environment, you wouldn't be running a salary beat like this. So you'd be running salary beat using uh, this bash file here that I've previously discussed in a previous video and then you would also um, uh, Just to show you what it would look like. So the salary beat is running as a separate process to your main uh, salary worker process essentially um, but uh, Yep, that's just a quick overview and thanks for watching